Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about the basics of the sedimentary rock cycle. So this video is primarily for students in Key Stage 3, but it's a good recap for those also at Key Stage 4. And we're going to start by looking at the process of rock weathering, and then explain how pieces are eroded, transported and then deposited, and then the series of events that occur after that. So what we've got in the middle of the screen here is just a simple diagram, hand-drawn, not, not the best by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a sort of cross-section of the upper section of our Earth, if you like, with the land and the mountains at the top, we've got the crust of the Earth, and a deeper mantle. First, we need to put this topic into some context. Now, rocks can be categorised into three big main groups, sedimentary, igneous and metamorphic, the names of which are taken from their method of formation. So I'm primarily focusing on the first of those, the sedimentary rocks, so named from the sediments that make them. And then I'll finish the video by briefly completing, or completing the rock cycle as a whole. Now, on the screen, you can see I've, I've, what I've done is I have all the, the parts of the cycle labelled and I've given just snippets of information that I'm going to talk about. Um, I would have had them normally just flashing up one by one, but um, it was proving a little tricky to do. So instead, what I'll do is I'll guide you through this whole sequence that I've got on the screen here. So let's start with number one. And first in this sedimentary rock cycle is the weathering of rocks at the surface. So this here is the first process that we're going to look at. So the whole cycle starts with weathering of rocks at the surface, and we'll call this number one. Now, this is by the action of rainwater, extremes of temperature and biological activity. It does not involve the removal of rock material, and that's key to mention. Now, water can enter crevices in rock, and when ice forms, those crevices can expand, and that would obviously cause um, breakages and pieces to fall off. That's an example of physical weathering. So as, or so too, as when the rock is put under stress when made to expand in heat and contract in the cold. So if you've got a rock that's continually um, expanding and contracting repeatedly, like this, for example, if it's hot during the day, cold at night, if it's repeatedly undergoing those kind of stresses, it's more likely to weather. And wind can cause loose particles to blast against rocks, weathering them. Just to note, um, in terms of chemical weathering, from acid rain because acid uh, acidic rain rather can react with the rock um, weakening it and in another video I talk about the formation of acid rain separately. So now we move to stage two in the cycle and that is the erosion and then subsequent transport of the sediment that we get. So we're going to move this way around the cycle and we come to stage two the erosion and transportation of sediment. So this is when soil and rock particles are actually worn away by the rain, by the wind, rivers and the sea. Now interestingly channels in the ground are actually cut out by torrents of rainwater wearing away rock formations. These rock particles are then moved elsewhere by gravity, wind or flowing water. So some examples. Examples can include um, particles moving down a mountain slope, as pebbles, sand and mud, or as salts dissolved in water itself. Now what we observe is that the large particles carried by fast flowing water, let's say, settle out much quicker than small ones when the water starts to slow down. So that leads us into the next stage in the sedimentary rock cycle, deposition or depositing that sediment. So depositing the sediment is stage three, and we're gonna move this way down the cycle. Now, deposition basically means to deposit, or dropping, in a sense, all of this material. Particles fall due to gravity forming sediment. Now, in water, the most dense particles fall to the bottom first, followed by the less dense particles and layers of different sediments start to form. It's then when we get burial and compacting of sediment. So again, we can move down to stage four, burial and compacting of sediment. Layers of sediment are piled upon one another, sometimes by hundreds of meters of sediment coming from above. 
and the weight of these layers squashes down that sediment or those sediment grains rather forcing any water out between them and that helps to cement them together into a solid piece of rock and it's these that are known as the sedimentary rocks so let's think of some examples well there's four that spring to mind limestone sandstone shale and chalk so we've got four sedimentary types of rocks there limestone sandstone shale and chalk now it's at this point when the newly formed rock could start to deform and change in a process known as metamorphism so we're going to look at this process here process number five label that there And this is the process of deforming rock and metamorphism. Now, the rocks are folded, what's called folded and faulted, which is basically another way of saying stretched and put under tension. And they're altered because of the pressure and or heat that they're experiencing. And that changes their appearance entirely. These sedimentary rocks can become metamorphic rocks. Now, metamorphic rocks can sometimes contain fossils, if they were formed from a sedimentary rock, but the fossils are usually squashed out of shape. It's important to say that these rocks are not formed from melting sedimentary rocks as such, but rather that the minerals in them have changed chemically. Sometimes metamorphic rocks are formed when sedimentary rocks as such are close to molten magma and they get heated up as a result. So sometimes those metamorphic rocks are formed from rocks close to molten magma and as a result they get heated or heated up. And that leads us really into this final part of the cycle that I'm going to talk about here. So we'll finish with number six and that's the crystallisation of magma. So let's explain what, what's going on there. Often magma or molten rock does not reach the surface and instead it stays within the crust where it slowly starts to cool and crystallise and then we get the formation of igneous rock. And that, as I said, is the final part on the diagram that we've been labelling. So the last phase is the crystallisation of magma. And then really we can just, for completeness sake, throw a little arrow going back to number one. And that in a nutshell is the basic outline of the sedimentary rock cycle. So I've just done a little overview in, in this particular video, not gone into so much depth, but just the key points. So if we had to summarise it in only five processes, it would be the weathering of rocks at the surface, erosion, transport, deposition or depositing sediment, and subsequent new rock formation. That's how I, just in those five processes, you could summarise ultimately the sedimentary aspect of the rock cycle. But what I've done here is given you a, a whole loop. I've explained the whole cycle in one big go in this video. Okay, hope all that helps.